Hey guys, welcome to the third video in our menus series. So last time we set about drawing the menu elements to the screen, and this time we're gonna code how to actually change the settings themselves. So inputting new values and saving those into the settings. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna hover over one of the settings to change. And then when we hit enter, that's when we're gonna start actually changing that setting, right? And we'll maybe color those elements yellow so that we know that, yes, we are inputting that element. And then once we're done, we just hit enter again and it will save it and we can resume moving down the menu. So to do this, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new variable called inputting. And this will be false originally, but when we hit enter, we're gonna make this toggle. So when inputting is true, that means we are currently changing the setting of the menu. So let's come into the step event and add that. So we wanna do it here. So previously we already made a check for whether we have hit the enter key. And then we had a switch statement here to check what type of menu element that we're currently on. And we really only put something in for the page transfer element, right? So we were allowing ourselves to transfer between the different menu pages. But now for every other type, so for the shift sliders, toggles and inputs, so this is where we want to actually be changing the menu. So for all of these, I want, when I hit the enter button, I want to toggle that inputting variable. So I can actually just put it here, just tab over and say inputting is equal to not inputting. So that's just gonna toggle it. So if it's currently true, it's gonna make it false. And if it's false, it will make it true. And because I haven't put a break anywhere here, if any of these are true, it's gonna go down to the next case and all of these will execute this line. In a switch statement, it just keeps going until it hits an actual break. So good, we've got all of those toggling the inputting value. And one more thing we'll wanna do is when we are inputting, we want to prevent ourselves from being able to move to other elements in the menu. So I'm going to actually put this into an if statement. So I'm gonna say if inputting, and we're actually gonna do stuff there later. So we'll just leave that and then we'll say else. So this is the case if we're not currently inputting, then we'll allow ourselves to do this, but otherwise it's not gonna run. All right, good. Now what we should do is actually make some visual changes so that we can tell when we are inputting over an element or not. So let's come into the draw GUI and let's scroll down a little bit to where we were drawing all the elements. So let's start with the shift and I'm not gonna change too much. The only thing I'm gonna change for the shift element, so remember this one was for things like the difficulty sliders where it was really just text showing. So I'm only gonna change basically this color of the text. I'm gonna just change it to yellow if we are inputting. But remember we are actually in a repeat statement because this is drawing every single element on the page, but we only want to draw the one we are currently kind of highlighting. So the one we are inputting on, that's the only one we wanna change the color on. So we're gonna to have to check both if we're inputting and if the YY variable, so this thing that was looping through the grid, so we're going, so it starts off at zero for the first one, one, two, three. So if YY is equal to whatever menu option that we're selecting, and remember we had a variable called menu option as an array for whatever page we're on, then we can turn that element yellow. And if that sounded a little bit confusing for you, if you've forgotten what any of those variables do, I highly suggest to revise and go back to the previous video and be sure you understand what that menu option variable is doing. All right, but let's keep going. So if inputting, and I could say equals equals true. So if inputting is equal to true, but you can actually just leave it as inputting because that means the same thing. So if this thing right here is actually equal to anything that's not zero, the if statement is gonna just take that to be true and it's gonna go ahead and execute whatever we tell it to. So you can just put if inputting and, so that yy variable is equal to the thing we're selecting on this menu page. Let's change our color. So remember we were setting our color right here. So instead of white, we just changed it to yellow. And we're actually just gonna do exactly the same thing for all of the rest of our menu types. So let's grab this. And you can customize this more if you want. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. So for the sliders, for the volume sliders, remember we had a line, a circle, kind of a knob on that line, and then the text itself. And I might just make the circle and the text yellow. So I'll put it here. All right, and so for the, the toggle, so this was for our full screen or not full screen element. So we actually have to put this up here before it does any of these checks. So down here, remember, it's using just whatever we set this as. So as long as we change that here, it's gonna accept this new color variable. 
All right, and finally for the input. And the only thing we were drawing here is just the text. So let's put that right below here, right? And otherwise it's just gonna keep to its default white that was set. All right, so let's give that a run and see how it looks. So we can't actually change anything yet, but we should get a visual kind of indication that we've started inputting. Let's come to the audio. So let's hit enter on the master. Great. And let's test this one. Yep, great, good, perfect. Okay, good. Now let's actually start changing those variables. So for that, we're done drawing. Let's come back to the step event. And now we're gonna start changing the values of the settings. So here's where things start to get a little bit tricky. So if we're inputting, this is where we're gonna do all of our work. And just like actually right here, if we press the enter button, we need to do different things depending on what kind of menu element type that we're on, right? So I'm gonna take this and we're gonna use the same kind of switch statement, but obviously we'll be doing different things. Except we're not going to need these two because the only menu element types that we're actually going to be inputting new values into are these ones. This was for the resume and exit and this was for changing between the menu pages. So we don't need those two. So let's just get rid of them. And we'll start off with the shift. So remember the shift was for when we are changing between set values, like with the difficulty kind of shifts. So we're probably gonna be changing this with the right and left keys, which is kind of like our horizontal input. So I'm gonna make a variable called H input and have it equal to our keyboard presses. So kind of like this down here. And we're probably gonna to have to get a similar thing for the rest of them, but it might vary slightly. So sometimes we'll be getting the press and sometimes we'll be getting whether we're pressing it down at all. So let's go, let's go keyboard. But for this one, it's just gonna be a press. So keyboard check pressed. And we use our global key right and key left for this. All right, so if we're pressing the right key, then this will be equal to one and this will be equal to zero. So we're gonna get one. Whereas if we're not pressing this and we are pressing this one, then we're gonna get zero minus one and H input will be negative one. So if we're pressing a key down at any one point, we're just gonna get a variable that's not equal to zero. So in that case, we know if we've actually pressed something or not. So if H input is not equal to zero, then that's when we have to go about changing the actual variable in the setting. So if we come back to the create event, remember that, so for the shift elements, actually for all of the elements, we were keeping the actual variable, the setting value in this column right here. So this is the fourth column, but because our kind of coordinates of the columns, they start at zero, this is actually column zero, one, two, three. So that is the column that we have to be accessing in our data structure. So let's come back. And we don't actually have to worry about finding the data structure itself. We actually already have done this in previous videos. So we can actually just grab this and just give it the column. So like I said, this is column three. And for the Y coordinate, so this is sort of what element it is. This is gonna be whatever the element that we're selecting is. And we can actually just add the H input because this will just be one or minus one. And for the shifts, we're just moving between the different variables that we put in the array. If we start on zero and we hit the right key, then we will be increasing this value that it starts off at from zero to one, and then it will be accessing this value. But of course, if we are here and then we hit minus one, there's no value here for it to go to, right? So negative numbers are kind of illegal. So we wanna prevent it from doing this. We wanna prevent it from getting too low and we wanna prevent it from going too high. So between zero and then whatever the length of the array is, minus one, of course, because this right here with its entries zero, one, two, the length of that array is three. So the last entry is entry number two. So we have to remember to minus one. So after we've done this, let's clamp it. So we have to give it a value to clamp and then a minimum and a maximum value that it can be. So that's the value we're clamping. The minimum is just gonna be zero in this case. And the max is gonna be the array length, 1D because it's just a 1D array. And then, so not this entry, but this entry, because this is the array. So that's entry number four, it's column four. So zero, yep, zero, one, two, three, four. All right, now be extra careful right here that all of our brackets are correct. So here's one bracket and we open another set here. So we have to put this and don't forget the negative one here. All right, so that should be clamping it properly. And you also might wanna add an audio effect here for when you're changing the value. So this is where you would put it. All right, so that should be it for the shift. 
Now for the slider. Now this is actually going to be quite similar to the shift. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, but there will be a few things that we have to change. So for one, we're not going to be going up in increments of one for the volume because the volume itself is just between zero and one. So instead of just pressing the key, we're probably going to be holding down the right and left key and have the slider kind of slowly move up and down. So we're going to change this to check instead of pressed. And then instead of adding this whole number, which is remember, it's going to be either one or minus one. Let's time this by 0 0.01. And you might want to forego using an audio effect here because it's going to be playing a lot every single second. Maybe you just want to play something intermittently. And then so the other thing that we have to change is we no longer want to have it like this, but for the volume, it's going to be between zero and one. And you might have different values here that you want to clamp it between. And actually you could just grab those values from the array right here. So similar to what we did with the, with this one, but that will do us. So that's all we need for the slider. And now for the toggle, now this should be almost exactly the same as the shift. So let's just grab all that again. And I think, so remember the toggle was for the full screen kind of thing. So when we're switching between on and off. So we still want everything to be pressed. We want it to be going between whole numbers, but we want to clamp it between zero and one. Again, you might want to tweak this if you have different kinds of elements and different numbers of entries. All right, so that one was easy. Now, finally, the input. So this one will be quite different because we're not really just caring about left and right presses. We're caring about any input into the key. So this is to change, for example, our controls. So we actually want the last key that we pressed. So I'm just going to make a temporary variable called KK, and that will just kind of be the key that we're going to be pressing. So we're going to use keyboard last key. This is going to be storing. If you just middle click on this, you can see that this stores the key code of the last key pressed. And this is good because we're going to need this because firstly, we need to check that this isn't the enter key because we don't want to be setting anything to enter because that's the one that we're using to do all of this. But you also might want to check that it's not kind of illegal keys. So if KK is not the enter key, and you might want to go ahead and do some other keys if you have keys that you want to prevent the player from using as part of their controls. Then we want to change. So exactly the same because all of our types store the value of the current setting in this column, in the third column. So these were our default values. You might have said something different, but I had the up key, left, right, and down. So those are the ones that we would be changing. So just like before, Let's just set this to that key that we just pressed. Now, what we can also do is right here, because it's nice and easy, we can just change the actual global variable that we set up to be for all of our keys. So down here, for up, left, right, and down, and you might have had more, we stored what the global variable's name was right here as a string. So we're going to access this. We're going to access whatever the global variable that we saw here in column two of whatever sort of element that we're on. And we're going to change this variable again to whatever that KK was. So we can use a function called variable global set. And again, we just access this, except instead of column three, we use column two, right? So column zero, one, two, this is where we're storing them. Change this to KK. Great. And if you want to play an audio for this, again, it might be a little bit tricky. You might want to check something like whatever KK is, if it's not equal to whatever we currently set to whatever was set. So if whatever we just pressed is something kind of new, then go ahead and play the sound. So something like that. All right, so that should be pretty good. We should be able to change all of our elements now. Let's give it a test. So hit F5 and run the game. All right, so we'll start with the audio. So hit enter and then use the horizontal and the right and left keys. Yep, so that's working, all right. Perfect, let's go check another one. So this is the shifts. There we go, so we can move between them. And you can check that we can't go belong any of the other ones. There we go. All right, now for our inputs. So let's change the up, left, right, down keys to the WASD keys. So let's go. So enter, W, enter. 
And you'll notice as soon as you change these, you can no longer use the keys that you originally set and you're gonna to have to use the new keys. So we know that this has actually worked and it's changed those global variables. All right, good. So now we'll do the setup for executing these scripts because at the moment we're updating what's shown in the data structures just fine, but it's not actually making any changes to the game. When we move the volume slider, it's not actually changing any volume in the actual game. So for that, we actually have built these scripts to take care of that. And in this tutorial, we'll just get them to run. And in the next one, we'll actually play around with what these scripts should be doing. So super quick, we were actually doing all of that down here. So remember, this is when we were pressing the input enter P button and we just did the page transfer one right here. But for actually all of the other kinds, we want to be running the script that they store here. So for the shifts, the toggles, and the sliders, they all have scripts that they should be executing once we hit enter. So first off for the script runners, so this would be the resume and exit key. So let's pull out this value here. So this, remember, this is in column two, so zero, one, two. So let's just copy this. So that should be that value right here. So this should be equal to the script that's stored in the script runner here. So all we have to do is execute that script. So script execute, there we go. And for the rest of them, so for all of these, we also want them to do the same thing, but only if we're inputting. For the script runner, it doesn't really matter because we're not ever really gonna be inputting when we're resuming and exiting. That was something particular to these. So we just put if inputting, then we do that. And we also might want to pass in, so as well as running the script, we might also wanna pass in the new value that we just updated, just so that script can then go and actually change, so the volume to whatever the thing that we input into this. So the way the script execute works is that you give it kind of the variable that's storing the script, and then you put its arguments in just with commas. So that would be just like that. And that value of course would be column three. So that's where all of those are. So just to check that that's worked, why don't we come into one of the scripts? So maybe the resume scripts, and let's just show debug message resume game and we'll do the same for change volume and maybe let's actually just add the value that we're passing in so that should just be argument zero but we will need to convert it to a string because right now it'll be a number and you can only add strings together right you can't add a string and a real together so we have to change argument zero to a string right so should it, it should say change volume two and then whatever that new value was. So let's run that. So we should see that come up in the debug in the console. So if we hit enter on resume, so you can see that script is running. So what you'd actually want to do is in this script have all your code for actually resuming the game. So you might want to initialize a bunch of stuff. So that would be in this code and you might want to then hide this menu element. So we'll go through some of that next time. But for now, let's just test that volume one as well. So hit enter and then Ah, so actually we don't want to put a break here because this is still changing. This is the thing that's toggling the input. So make sure that that does not have a break there. All right, one more time. There we go and hit enter and that comes up down here at the console. All right, so I'm going to leave it there for today. We'll probably have one more video on this to cover how you can utilize those scripts that we set up. But if you're feeling confident, you can go ahead and do that yourself. So I'd like to thank everyone on Patreon who are supporting me to create these videos. And some special shout outs to Danielle Hargrave, Max Molinaro, Euthelian, Corey S, Sano, The Great Poultry, XD Game Studio, Chris J, Colin McLernan, David Howes, and Stuart Wells. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you're well, and I'll see you in the next video.